Okay, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. May the Lord bestow upon us his blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom, now and ever to the age of all ages, amen. Uh, today is the second Sunday of the blessed month of Tut, and um, we decided to uh, change locations a bit. Um, so we're in the altar, and I'll explain uh, towards the end of the um, presentation. Um, why? <laughs> um, so if you recall, the the theme of this month is the love of God. As um, we read in the gospel of last Sunday, um, they accused our Lord of being one who loved the tax collectors and sinners. And so the church chose this month to focus on the most important thing about being a Christian, um, which is to love. Um, <clears throat> and the four Sundays, um, we see different figures and different examples of, uh, of love in, in uh, the gospel. So St. John the Baptist, the Lord says, there's no one greater born among women uh, than John the Baptist. And we see his focus on, in his life on the love of God and his preaching about uh, if someone loves God, then they will repent because we don't realize um, how we fell short of the glory of God and how we sinned against the one who loves us so much. Um, <clears throat> and then this week, we uh, read of the Lord and his discussion with the young lawyer um, who asks, what must I do, do to inherit eternal life? And basically, he answers with the answer of love. Um, and then next week, we see Zacchaeus, who renewed his love for the Lord um, by giving. Um, and climbing the cross. Uh, actually, we won't read from the Gospel of Zacchaeus next Sunday because it will fall on the Feast of the Cross, and so we replace with the readings of the, the Feast. Um, <clears throat> and then the last Sunday of the month, um, we see the repentant love in the form of the, the woman who went to the feet of the Lord uh, with her tears um, and, and wiping them with the, the feet of the Lord with her hair, and the Lord praises her and announces salvation to her. <clears throat> um, so uh, many of the fathers, especially uh, Ephraim the Syrian, he says, um, these are two commandments in one, as, as we'll see. So in the Gospel according to St. Luke, we read all of the four Gospels, as you just saw, from the Gospel according to St. Luke. Today was from chapter 10, verses 21 to 28. We'll just read the last few verses of the passage. It says, Behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him. So he wasn't doing this honestly, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? So the Lord responded by saying, What is written in the law? What is your reading of it? So he made him answer his own question. Um, so he answered and said from Deuteronomy, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said, good answer. You have rightly answered. Now do this, and you will live. <clears throat> um, and so St. Uh, Ephraim the Syrian says, these are the two commandments in one. Um, and we see this in the gospel of uh, loving God, number one, and loving your neighbor, second. Um, we see this in the gospel according to St. Luke, but also St. Matthew writes a similar passage in, in his 22nd chapter, <clears throat> where again, the Lord responds, and there's a difference here. Um, he, he adds with all your strength, um, and he says, this is the first and great commandment. But then he says, the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two hang all the law and the prophets. And so um, <clears throat> the fathers say that these are the two commandments that are in one concept, the, the commandment of love, number one towards God, number two um, to uh, your neighbor. And these are like, as St. Ephraim says, the two wings that we need uh, to fly to the kingdom of heaven. Um, and as, as we've said before, uh, this is probably one reason why um, Moses, the arch prophet whom we celebrated the, last Friday, um, carried the Ten Commandments in two tablets, one with the commandments um, towards God and the other one towards uh, man. Um, <clears throat> and so we have to focus on both of these relationships um, in order to love properly and fully. Um, and this is hard 
to do. It's easy to understand and hard to do because as St. Basil says, we have to go, um, we can't learn this externally. It has to be something internal. Um, we have images or, or examples of others, which is helpful, but at the same time, the main question is, you know, how much uh, do I go um, from within? Sorry, I think, oops, I, there's a slide that's not showing, but I'll play it anyway. Hopefully you can still see this. No? Okay, just holler <laughs> if it's not working. <laughs> okay, um, how about now? Okay, that's the best I could do. If not, we'll, we'll try to re-record re it or something. But the main question that I need to ask myself, um, do I really love God as much as I thought? I did, or maybe that I loved him in the past, maybe I don't love him as much as I do now. Um, sorry, I, I don't love him as much now as I did in the past. Um, and God forbid that we hear the voice of the Lord saying, um, I know you, that you do not have the love of God in you. Um, that's a very scary thing to hear from our Savior. Um, and in the book of Revelation, chapter two, the first church that he speaks to of Ephesus, he says, I know your works, your labor, your patience, that you cannot bear those who are evil. These are good things. You're doing a lot of good things. Um, you're patient. You tested those who say they're apostles or not. You have the right doctrine. You're not um, easily uh, swayed by the false teachings out there. Um, <clears throat> and you have persevered. That's good. And you have patience. Um, and you have labored for my name's sake. So God is saying to us, I'm not telling you that you're completely bad. You have done a lot of good things. But then he says, nevertheless, I have this against you that you have left your first love. So we should ask ourselves every day or even every year, have I left my Lord and Savior? Um, and have I fallen um, from that state of love, maybe in the past? Um, and so if the answer is yes, which most of us, honestly, yeah, we we're not as close to God as we could be or we should be. So if that's the case, then we have to repent. We have to go within, as St. Basil says. Um, so he says, he writes, in, in, uh, the love of God is not something we learn from one another, nor has anyone taught us how to love the sunshine or defend life or love our parents. Indeed, learning how to love God does not come to us from outside. In the very convention of life of man, there's place within us. So here he's saying, when I created you, I created for the capacity to love and to love me and to receive my love. Um, and this is a, a good thing that we don't have to go far to understand or to do what we should do or, what, or to bring us close to God. God is not far from us. Love is not far from us. Um, how we love and how we use it and how we grow in it, that depends on how we respond um, to, to love or to God. <clears throat> so um, as St. John, the beloved disciple says, we love him because he first loved us. So we just need to study God more. We need to recognize his care as lover of mankind for me personally. Um, and some people say, oh, I just look at my life and I see all the good things that God has done for me. And some people say, well, I look at the bad things and see how they have stopped. Or other people say, I just look around in nature or in science or anatomy or the miracle of life or all the gracious gifts that he gives to us um, that we could see or, 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 or study with, with our mind. That helps me understand that there is God and there is a creator. And other people say, when I go to scripture, of course, this is the, the clearest place, when I study the Holy Bible and look at how God has dealt with man and how, especially when he came in the fullness of, uh, uh, in his incarnation, um, in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ, then uh, that reveals the perfect love uh, to me. <clears throat> uh, and then I respond like we prayed in the Matins Psalm 
of today. Um, Psalm 8 um, says, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. What is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? Who are we? Who am I that God humbles himself to come to me? Um, and he does. But when we sit down and think about it, that's when we recognize how great God loves us. And that is when we want to love him more and we try to love him more. So that's the process. <clears throat> And then we go to the history of God's love, um, especially in the person of Christ. We'll just focus on three, three things. The creation itself, how he saved and forgave me, my sins, and then how he reveals himself to me. These are probably the three main points of, of, uh, that target the, the greatness of God's love for uh, the person. Um, <clears throat> and I just thought, kind of to summarize this last point, um, it probably would be better when we go to the divine liturgy of St. Gregory, uh, the theologian. Um, and he kind of puts it very beautifully and very perfectly, um, these three main points. Um, I'll try to just, and I'm not going to, to um, list it completely. If you like, you can, you know, um, read uh, or study this. Uh, on your own, um, but it's a beautiful contemplation. On, and, and sometimes when we pray this, um, it helps renew our love and refocus our mind on the greatness of God's love uh, for the world, but also for me as a person. So um, <clears throat> I think that in the, the agios part of, of this, the holy, holy, is, we say, no manner of speech can measure the depth of your love. We're talking to our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, no me measure of speech, no manner of speech can measure the depth of your love toward mankind. You as lover of mankind have created me as man. You had no need of my servitude, but rather I had need of your lordship. Because of the multitude of your tender mercies, you brought me into existence when I was not. You have raised heaven as a roof for me, established the earth for me to walk. So you have done all of these things in the creation. Why? For my sake. Um, that, that is the main point of what we're trying to say. When we realize God is doing all this for me, um, uh, that is when it, inf that helps inflame my love towards him. Um, and not just the creation, but more specifically the, the cross, the salvation, the forgiveness of sins. Um, you, oh my master, have turned for me the punishment, which I deserved because of my sin, into salvation. And, and we as he's the good shepherd, as he's the good father, as he's the good physician, he, have, he has done all of these things for my sake. Um, father Beshoy uh, Kamel of blessed memory, um, he used to uh, take, uh, he had an icon of the cross that he had in his bed when he was suffering in, in, in sickness for a long period of time. Um, and he wrote with his own hands, um, for my sake, uh, under it. So he could remind himself, and he would stare at that icon for hours, um, <clears throat> uh, and he would say, uh, "You know, Saint Mary Magdalene, she chose the best place at the feet of Christ." Um, <clears throat> so, again, the, when we realize how he created me, he created the world, all this for me, and he died on the cross for my sake, um, to forgive me my sins and to restore me. Um, to, to be, live with him forever in paradise. And then finally, not only does he do that, but he's constantly offering himself to, to show himself more and more um, to me. Um, as, um, you know, when two people get engaged and they're planning uh, or preparing to live their life forever with this person, um, they just have to make sure before they make this final step, this is the one, right? And so, in our life, we're kind of doing that. Um, we're, we're proving to ourselves and to our Savior, this is the one for me that I want to live forever. Um, so let me get to know him more and to be confirmed that this is um, my whole life. Um, uh, and then once that mystery is consummated, um, then we live with, when, once we leave this world, um, we, we are able to live with our heavenly bridegroom forever. Um, so <clears throat> God is always there to show himself more to me that I may learn to love him more and more and desire to live with him um, forever.
uh, <clears throat> and uh, that just needs like openness um, and, and an open heart and an open mind. Um, as St. Paul um, encourages the Corinthians um, saying, oh Corinthians, we have spoken the open to you. We're, we're not hiding anything from you. Our heart is wide open to you. As, as the father and apostle, he's saying to his children, you're not restricted by us, but you're restricted by your own affections, your desire for the world, your desire for yourself, your you, you desire um, for, for any other thing that is not God is restricting you from opening your heart to God and to one another. Um, that's why he's saying you also be open just like we are, are open. Um, can you imagine a child that is hiding something from, from their parents. It's like, why are you doing this? I already know. <laughs> uh, just come and tell and sit. I can help you. I can uh, help you learn to um, whatever the problem or concern is. Um, and and the, uh, this is why in the church, we put first and foremost before the altar of God, the icon of the bosom of the Father. And we call it the bosom of the Father um, <clears throat> because it's, it's, uh, it's actually supposed to be not flat, but supposed to be curved, just like the, the, the curve of uh, someone who is embracing um, another. Um, and it's to show that God's love is, some people say it's round, just like the church is round, because there's no beginning, no end. So there's no end to God's love. But also, we say and there should be no windows or, or doors, um, because there's nowhere to escape the embrace. That, that he is, you, you can't, like if, for example, if I hug someone and, and they don't want to be hugged or they, they run under, you know, my arm, but not with God, like if you're going to come to God, um, you can't escape his love. Um, <clears throat> so that's why we put this icon first and foremost uh, before the altar and the throne of God. And it depicts, it should either be Christ on the throne because he's in his glory, right? Or Christ in heaven. Um, or the second coming, but this shows the glory of God and the love of, of his glory. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, uh, the Lord says, um, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. So the Lord is saying, this is me and my glory. This is what is awaiting you. Right? I'm going to come again and receive you to myself um, because I want you to be with me forever. Right? This is what maybe we should be contemplating and thinking of when we look at the, the, the icon in the bosom of, of, of the Father. Um, <clears throat> and so we need to love with an active mind. Um, like a lot of people say, oh, it's a thought that counts. Um, or the person who is thinking about God is the one who loves God. Uh, and the one who is speaking to him uh, it's because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so um, we need to evaluate, you know, how much do I pray or do I want to pray? How much do I read his word or want to listen to him? The, you can't say you love a person and not want to talk to them ever or not to want to listen to them, uh, what they have to say, right? Or not give them anything or not spend time with them, right? So that's an honest re reflection of how much we, we want to love or how much we, we are loving uh, our Lord. <clears throat> uh, there's a nice little pamphlet of a Orthodox, uh, a Russian Orthodox Metropolitan um, in the last century um, <clears throat> who, 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 who contemplates on the passage of today, especially the, the commandment in Deuteronomy. Um, <clears throat> and he says, well, what does the love of God mean? He says, without any doubt, to love God means um, to be devoted to God, to be steadfastly devoted to God with our whole hearts and souls. Um, that is, with all the strength and fullness of love that is possible for the human heart. Uh, not sharing our love in the same measure with any other being. Um, and he says, it means to think more often and more readily about God. I have to train my mind to think more about the heavenly things about and about my heavenly bridegroom. Um, and sometimes we have to force ourselves to change our thought process or to, and, and that's why the times for prayer uh, help us in, in this uh, exercise. Um, it says, because in general, it is an attribute of the love of our heart that the one whom we sincerely love 
is constantly with us in, and in our thoughts. Um, so we want God to, we know God is with us, but when we think about him, we remind ourselves that he is with us. Um, <clears throat> finally, um, we, we leave you with a quote from St. John Chrysostom about um, the importance of, of this great uh, virtue. Um, as uh, there's, as St. Paul says in the Corinthians, you know, it never fails. He says, miracles don't attract unbelievers as much as the way you live your life. And the way you live your life, he says, nothing brings about the proper life as much as love. May God give us um, a piece of his, himself, which is, or, or actually the, the definition of, of himself, with, which, is, which is love, um, so that we may be united to him more and more until we live with him forever. Glory be to him now and forever into the age of ages. Are there any questions? Anybody? Um, just have, uh, I mean, most of the announcements you can, uh, again, um, uh, read for yourself in the email that, God willing, we uh, send out every Monday. Um, the liturgies are pretty much the same. The walk-in services are the same, Wednesdays at 6.30 to 8, um, Fridays from 8 to 10, and then uh, Saturday night Vespers, um, which is the Feast of the Cross this coming uh, Sunday. Um, at 6.30, and then the Bible study, um, which will be um, uh, posted 7.30 uh, on uh, YouTube. Uh, so, God willing, um, we have, uh, we'll keep you updated as much as we can with, with any changes. If you want to register for a liturgy, that you also click on the um, links that we have on the website and in the email. Um, and then, God willing, we have the Sunday school classes at 11.30. The links are also on the website. Uh, any questions, or Buna, did you want to add anything? I think we're good. Okay, God be with you all and bless you.